Welcome back. Uh, yeah, these are my, my first time actually in a courtroom. And I'm not actually in a courtroom. So that's fine, we're closer than we've ever been. Uh, let's see. Investigate. Uh, these are some plastic bags stacked up on the table. There's a tea set too, but there doesn't seem to be any signs of disturbance. Yeah, the table's all neat and tidy. Maybe they were super quiet in their scuffle. After all, I didn't hear anything from out in the hallway, you know. Maybe the plastic bags scattered on the floor are throwing us off? There's some stuff in the bag, pal. I suppose this was Mr. Faraday's bag. It's probably the trial evidence I was supposed to collect from him. This is the evidence. Ah, I better not touch it. I'll leave prints on it. Do you just not pay attention to anything you do? I like that I've been hostile with this guy ever since we met. Detective Bad, do you have any thoughts on the case? Faraday and Rel, it looks like they killed each other, to me. Although, there are a few things that just don't seem right. And what would they be? Why don't you try thinking on your own first before you bother me, boy? What? Now I've been downgraded to just boy? Whoa! What is a detective gumshoe? My, t my TV at home is so tiny compared to this one, pal. Then perhaps you should purchase a more normal sized television like this one. Oh, let me see here. Wow, this thing is huge. <laughs> and way too noisy. You're the noisy one, Scruffy. Don't touch it, you'll get your fingerprints all over it. But I didn't touch it. Preservation of the crime scene is the foundation of detective work. The foundation. That sounds like something the rookie here needs to shore up on. What did you do? The TV has been left on. Why are you looking at me like that? It wasn't me. I didn't touch anything. Gumshoe, do you know what will happen to you if you touch something again? Right. I won't touch anything. I won't even go anywhere near the TV, sir. And you, get back to your investigation, alright? I was planning to do so anyway. The window is open and... <laughs> there's a fresh flowery scent in the air. Ugh, the flowers in the garden down there are so gross and ghastly. You think maybe you could try offering something useful for a change? Well, at least there's no way someone escaped through this window, pal. They wouldn't wake up and smell the flowers after a fall from the third floor. Are you willfully ignoring the fact that there are also iron bars on the window? Yeah, I guess there's that too. Either way, no one can get through these windows, right? They thought of everything when they were designing this courthouse. Very nice. Uh, looks like Mr. Faraday fell on top of Mr. Rell. At first glance, it seems like they have killed each other. Using logic and only logic concludes it. The only logical conclusion is, aha! What was that outburst for? My detective, my detective's instincts just hit me real hard. It was Mr. Rell that first fell first. See? You don't need a detective's instincts for that. It's common sense. But I suppose we won't know how much. How much? We won't know much more. Oh my god! I can't read today. We won't know much more than that until after I examine the bodies. I won't rest until I've inspected every suspicious looking nook and cranny. Uh... Mr. Faraday, how ironic. It is for him to lose his life in a courthouse. Yeah, why did it have to be like this? I don't know what to say. I can't believe this happened while I was on watch, pal. Rather than beating yourself up, you should spend your time continuing the investigation. Didn't you become a detective in order to solve crimes? Yeah. Then let's get back to work and find out the cause of his murder. Right, I'm on it, pal. Uh... Looks like Mr. Faraday died while holding the gun in his right hand. 
So he shot Mr. Rell and then fell on top of him while still gripping onto the gun. I guess that does seem kind of strange, huh? I mean, why would Mr. Faraday know how to fire a gun? It's not exactly rocket science, even I know how to pull a trigger. Although I doubt I'll ever need to use one. I hope I never have to fire a gun either, pal. But it sure does look cool to hold a gun in your hands. It appears the police screening procedure needs a thorough review. <laughs> anyway, I should jot down some notes about the handgun and Mr. Faraday's hands. Other weapon. Looks like Mr. Rell died with the knife in his hand. There's some blood stuck on it. Then he must have used this as a weapon, no doubt about it. Was Mr. Faraday carrying this on his personage? Did he bring this as a piece of evidence for the trial? Or did he bring it with a very different intention in mind? I should jot some notes down about it. First he killed the ambassador staff member, then he, then he was murdered himself. This guy wasn't exactly an angel, you know. Oh, what makes you say that? Well, he's been hauled into the precinct several times for theft and assault, pal. So yeah, he's definitely the type to have committed a murder or two. Well, he did admit to killing Mr. Died, died Man. Dead Man. Good point, pal. I knew my detective's intuition was telling me something. Yep, do you know about it? It's a special feeling that all the tech we don't have time for this conversation right now. <laughs> Let's return to the investigation. Uh... Hmm. Why are there plastic bags scattered all around? Those bags are for keeping evidence safe, pal. I know that much, detective. You sure are good at this stuff, aren't you, pal? Normally I'd be happy when someone compliments me, but what's this guy? Anyway, could these plastic bags of evidence... Plastic bags be evidence of a fight between these two men? His hand is all black down here. I wonder what that could be. If you look closely, this blotching pattern resembles an ink stain. Interesting. An ink stain. I usually get ink on my own hands when I use my feather pen. A feather pen, I've never seen one before. I'm sure you aren't just making it up. Nope, is that all? Mr. Rell's cause of death from being was from being shot, right? That's what we think, but it's hard to tell with him lying face down. Death is bad enough, but it's truly lamentable that someone would try to hide the truth. Uh, are you sure they were trying to hide something? I can't confirm Mr. Rell's cause of death with his body positioned like that. Detective Bad, I'd like to examine the bodies in further detail if possible. What's this? You're not able to form a theory with them the way they are? I believe an examination of the bodies is vital to finding the perfect evidence, don't you? Hm. I suppose you do have a point. Well, hurry up and get on with it. Labby. Yes, sir. We've taken enough photos of the scene, sir. And there you have it. Do you not approve? Of course not. What? The investigation of a crime scene is the work of a detective, so don't touch a thing. Hey, big fella, turn over the bodies from me, will you? Okay. Please forgive me, Mr. Faraday, sir. Gumshoe, do not get emotionally involved. Remember, you're a detective. Yes, sir. Understood, sir. Well, that does indeed look like a bullet and a knife wound. And then he's got the pen, which probably left the ink stain. I will rest until I've inspected every suspicious looking nook and cranny. The pen. Something in his breast pocket. It's a fountain pen. You know, I always keep a pencil behind my ear. It's because Detective Bad is always telling me you should always write your name on everything you own. Yes, somehow you do strike me as quite a forgettable individual. We have the wounds. Knife wound in his chest here. I wonder if it would match the knife Mr. Rell is holding. Labby? Yes, sir. Verifying now, sir. Make it quick. 
from the look of things, one could deduce that the knife Mr. Rell is holding is what killed Mr. Faraday. I'm assuming it is a bullet wound. Shot in the chest. Takes some guts to fire a gun in a courthouse. I mean, I've seen a detective. I've been a detective for a whole week and I still haven't fired a single round yet. There aren't any burn marks on his clothes, that must mean... Wait, burn marks? A round... A round grows very hot as it discharges from a firearm. Therefore, burn marks usually left when a shot is fired from point blank range. There we go, Mr. Rell must have been shot from at least a yard or two away. You sure do know a bunch of neat stuff for your age, pal. Apparently this detective has as much of common knowledge as your everyday marsupial. Let us try now to understand how the two men died. First, Mr. Faraday took the gun and the knife out from today's trial evidence. Then he aimed the gun at Mr. Rell and fired. However, Mr. Rell managed to grab the knife and counter Mr. Faraday while being shot. Then the two men fell together where they stood. That is my theory in any case. What a crazy way to go. Still, something about that explanation just doesn't seem right. Uh, crime scene, blah blah blah. Hmm. I believe I now have a firmer grasp on what happened here. Uh, let's see. Neat table. With a set of plastic bags, so these probably go with these. There's a very tidy pile of plastic bags on the table, and yet a portion of them wound up scattered on the floor as well. It's not likely that the ones on the floor were knocked over during a struggle, in which case might there be another explanation as to how they got there? Another reason? I believe it's possible that the blood on the outside of the bag is related somehow. Eek, please get that blood away from me, pal. Protect the gumshoe, whose blood is on this bag? Uh, hold on, let me ask the lab guy. Alright, please hurry. Wait till you get a load of this, pal, it's Mr. Faraday's. Oh, and the technician said they didn't find anything else on or in the bag either. Hmm. It would appear that this bag is a very important piece of evidence. Okay, if you say so, I leave it in your hands, pal. Uh, well, this and that. Uh, that splotch on Mr. Faraday's hand, I wonder if it might be the ink from his fountain pen. Let's ask the lab guy. Detective Gumshoe, I confirm that the substance on Mr. Faraday's hand is the ink from the fountain pen. I see, good work. You know, I've always wanted to say that, even if it was just one time, goddammit. If Mr. Faraday wrote- Ah! If Mr. Faraday wrote with his fountain pen in his left hand, I think it's fair to assume he was left-handed. It appears that Mr. Faraday's pen is a very important to our case as well. If you say so, pal! Yeah, because I mean, it wouldn't be too difficult to shoot with the right hand if it was up close, but... Since there's no burn marks, you'd have to be far away, so it'd be difficult to do that with the right hand. I guess there's not much left to investigate, huh? They really did kill each other. No, we can't conclude that quite yet. There's still something I find very peculiar here. The theory that they simply killed one another is too simplistic in this case. In fact, there is actually a contradiction that shows there is another possibility. No way, pal, really? Hmm, I suppose I would just have to show you the contradiction in this crime scene. Uh... I assume it's the fact that it's in his right hand. Left-handed. There we go. 
Now we come face to face with the contradiction I spoke of, and it is this. Mr. Faraday used his left hand to write with his fountain pen. Ergo, he is left-handed. And yet the handgun is in his right hand. Don't you find it odd that the left-handed Mr. Faraday would hold the gun in his right hand? That, ladies and gentlemen, is the great contradiction haunting this crime scene. Hey, you're right, pal. That does seem kind of strange. But how could something like that happen? The facts add up to one conclusion and one alone. Someone else put the gun in Mr. Faraday's hand after he died. Someone else. Plastic bags scattered on the floor and a gun in the wrong hand. I sense the presence of a shadowy figure behind this case. A person of vile intent who is serious about keeping the truth from us. Yay! Here's the autopsy report. It is probable that Mr. Rell survived for a short time after he was shot. However, Mr. Faraday died instantly from his stabbing. Interesting. It looks like we now know everything we need to know about this case. Are you sure we know everything? Of course. The incident began with Mr. Faraday attempting to get his revenge. The prosecutor went into a rage from being accused and tried to kill the defendant, but the defendant fought back and they ended up killing each other. It's all very clear and simple. There's absolutely no margin for doubt. Do you really believe that to be the truth? Ha! Huh, are you saying that just because I figured the truth out before you, that you don't want to believe it's true? It's alright. If you disagree with my argument, then prove me wrong. Well, if there are any contradictions to be found, that is. Don't worry, I will. Mr. Faraday's death was instantaneous. Well, Mr. Rell survived for a short time. We know that's true, because that's what the autopsy report said. From this, it's obvious that Mr. Faraday died after he shot Mr. Rell. Sure. And Mr. Rell, while on the brink of death, Was it? Was it the one who died, like the guy on the bottom? That the one that they said died instantly is the one that's on the top. Well, on the rig of this, stole the knife and stabbed him. Those are the facts of this case. Mr. Faraday's death was instantaneous, therefore he must have attacked first. Proving that logic to be false is probably the fastest way to show, show her that she's wrong. In that case, I should first look at any holes in her theory. Faraday's death was instantaneous, we know that's true. From this, it was obvious that Faraday died after he shot Mr. Rell. I mean, that checks out, because he would have had to if he died instantly. Mr. Rell, while on the brink of death, stole the knife and stabbed him. Press? Hold it! So you believe that the dying Mr. Rell stole the knife from Mr. Faraday. Mr. Rell became desperate as he did not want to die. Human beings can do an amazing things when they're put to the test. So the two men struggled. And in the end, Mr. Rell was able to grab the knife and stab Mr. Faraday. The messy condition of this room is a testament to their struggle. Yes, my logic is perfectly sound. Can you really say that it's perfect? What are you insinuating? Nothing. However, I can't let what you say slide by without further inquiry. One must be clear and precise, so if you could append that statement to your testimony. Fine. They struggled, and Mr. Wren used the last of his strength to counterattack Mr. Faraday. Yeah, if there was, he didn't hear a sign of a struggle, but you're saying they struggled. Objection! It 
if the two men were fighting, their struggle would have surely caused quite a bit of noise. However, Detective Gumshoe testifies that he heard absolutely nothing. Huh, you place too much faith in that detective's testimony, you know. But for the sake of argument, let's say there wasn't a fight. How, then, did Mr. Rell get his hands on the knife? Mr. Faraday's bag was sitting right here in lobby number two. It is not hard to imagine that perhaps Mr. Rell saw a chance and took it out at some point. So what you're saying is this. Mr. Rell took a chance when he saw the opportunity and took the knife from the bag. And then Mr. Faraday shot Mr. Rell after being stabbed. Hmm. Isn't there something strange of Friends' statement just now? Uh, something is off. Wait, something doesn't add up. Oh, really? It's simply not possible for Mr. Faraday to have shot Mr. Rell after being stabbed. Yeah, because of the, the order of the bodies. Take that! According to the coroner's report, Mr. Faraday died instantaneously, meaning that he died immediately upon being stabbed by the knife, ergo he could not possibly have fired the gun after that. Oh, you got me. But of course, well, that the report is correct, then there's only one correct explanation. If we suppose that Mr. Rell attacked first, then Mr. Faraday, who died instantly, would have been unable to kill Mr. Rell. Therefore, Mr. Rell must have stabbed Mr. Faraday after he was shot, then they both died. That is the only explanation that makes logical sense. Getting your opponent's idea in order to prove your own theory. I see you've been studying Forensica. I just wanted to explain it to you as simply as possible. Before you foolishly propose a foolish theory that only a foolish fool like you could. Hmm. How naive of you to believe that only your opinions are valid. And still expect to discover the truth of the crime scene offers you. Forensica, you've still got a ways to go. What are you talking about? Are you saying there's a flaw in my logic? Mr. Faraday died instantly, and the fact that he died is what gives rise to the contradiction in the scene. Uh, the order of the bodies fell. Let me get this straight. What you are arguing is this. Mr. Faraday took the gun from his evidence bag and shot Mr. Rell. Then the wounded Mr. Rell found an opportunity to take the knife and strike back. Upon being stabbed, Mr. Faraday died on the spot, and then Mr. Rell died thereafter. If that's the case, then how do you explain this? Take a good look at the order in which the bodies are piled. No! Mr. Faraday's body is lying on top of Mr. Rell's, therefore, Mr. Rell must have died before Mr. Faraday. Impossible! Yes, I agree that it seems strange no matter what angle you approach it from. Which means that the real mystery behind this crime scene... Oh. Uh, not so fast. I'm gonna, I'm gonna assume she is gonna say that, like, they died, like, stabby, shoot, like, same time, and then, like, fell on top of each other, which the, the range of the bullet is my guess is gonna be what counteracts that, but let's see. I simply think that you ought to think a bit more outside the box, and that it's even clearer now that the incident started with Mr. Faraday's murderous intent. She sure bounced back quickly. An explanation won't be enough this time. It's going to take some very decisive evidence to prove her wrong. It was just chance that Mr. Faraday's body fell on top of Mr. Rell's. Uh... I don't really have anything that counteracts that, but... The two bodies fell into a pile, which indicates that they attack each other at the same time, yeah. It really doesn't matter in the slightest that they fell in the opposite order. I just know that Forenza's explanation isn't absolutely correct. All I have to do is find a hole in her logic. Once I do, I can then present her with the evidence that proves the contradiction. Just chance, I'm fine with that. They fell into a pile. They attacked each other, so... Hold it! What do you mean by they attacked each other at the same time? 
I assume Mr. Faraday had the two different weapons in his hands. He made to he made to attack Mr. Rowe while holding both the knife and the revolver. And then, after Mr. Faraday fired the gun, Mr. Rowe grabbed the knife as he was falling and stabbed Mr. Faraday. That is how Mr. Rowe wound up on the bottom with Mr. Faraday on top. At close range, that is more than possible. But well, we know it wasn't close range because there's no burn on the clothes. Well, if you have any other ideas, then show me what you've got. Oh, I will. And to that extent, I'd like, to, I'd like for you to append what you just said to your testimony. As you please. They attack each other at the same time at close range. Uh, present. few yards away. Objection! So you believe they killed each other at close range? Sorry, but that's impossible. Just as it's written in the crime scene notes, the firing of the handgun did not leave a gunpowder burn on Mr. Rell's clothes. Therefore, Mr. Rell and the gun must have been separated by a distance of at least two or three yards. Nah. Yes, this is by far the biggest contradiction. The two bodies are piled up on top of each other, yet the gun was fired from a distance. And with there being no chance that Mr. Rell moved that far after being shot, that leaves only one possible explanation. What a, com <laughs> a completely foolish line of foolish thoughts from a thoroughly foolish fool. If I'm not right, then who was it that made the first move with the intent to kill, huh? Who? Person who attacked first... Neither. Here in this room, contradictions appear no matter which man we claim attacked first. Thus, there can only be one explanation. There was a third person here. It was that third person who killed both Mr. Faraday and Mr. Rell, and set their bodies up to make it look like a double murder. That third person is the real culprit. Miles Edgeworth, there's just one thing you're missing. Evidence, correct? Exactly. Everything you said up until now is nothing but a story played out in your head. I do that a lot, to be fair. However, this is where the real test begins. Can you prove that there was a third person involved? Of course. If the third person was truly here, the fact would re resolve the glaring contradiction. The proof that has been all that this has all been set up made to look like they killed each other. What do I have that makes it look like? My badge! <laughs> Maybe? Oh, not the page two. This is really the only thing we haven't accounted for yet. So I'm assuming it's this. I don't know how, but I assume it's this. Take that! The gun in Mr. Faraday's hand and the plastic bag with his blood on it. These two items point to the presence of a third person. How so? Recall Detective Gumshoe's testimony. I didn't hear a single peep of a struggle. If there wasn't a struggle in this room, then there shouldn't be any plastic bags on the ground. Meaning that someone else must have deliberately scattered them around. Do not see the possibility in this. Disregarding the gun for the moment, there's a high probability of blood splatter when a knife is used on a person. If the culprit held the knife with a plastic bag around it, they could use the bag to catch any blood splatter from which they with for when they withdrew the knife. Then, by spreading a few more plastic bags around, mixing the bloody one with in with them, and arranging the room to make it look like there was a struggle between the two, they were able to conceal their presence. Ah. But then, where'd you go? Looks like we've still got a long way to go in this investigation. Yes. Objection. Uh, 
Uh, what the heck's up with you, pal? Mr. Bad, I advise you to place Detective Gumshoe under arrest. What? Oh, uh, they think he's the third person? What's the meaning of this? Ha! Huh. Looks like you're not man enough to discipline your own subordinates. Don't you dare. That detective claims he was there standing in front of the door the entire time, but I have it on good authority that it was all a giant lie. Miss you, I ask that you please explain that last statement. I'll let his honor explain it himself. I saw it with my own eyes, I tell you. During the recess, there was a period of time when there was no one in the hallway. What? See, Mr. Bad? So I ask, why would a detective who was supposedly doing his job the whole time want to fabricate such a lie? Gumshoe, did you kill Faraday? No! Of course not, sir. It would appear that the one who set this whole crime scene up is the detective, which basically renders his testimony a complete lie and wholly invalid. It looks like your perfect logic has just come tumbling down, Miles. I mean, yours still doesn't make sense. <laughs> I was in the hallway the whole time, but I didn't hear a single people who struggle. Was that statement really a lie? Detective Gumshoe, you're now a suspect in the murder of two men. Now spit the truth or so help me. I haven't lied to anyone, sir, honest. I really was there. I was in the hallway the whole time. Detective Bat, I ask that you please do not act without my permission. After all, I am the one that is heading up this investigation, am I not? Don't talk like you know what's going on, boy. All I want is for this investigation to run perfectly. Perfection is the, is the only wish of a disciple of Von Karma, after all. Therefore, before you take Detective Gumshoe into custody, I'd like to set the record straight on something. And what's that? Uh, I mean, if, if I say what, why he wasn't in the hallway, he would say he is. State of the hallway is irrelevant because I was there. So yeah, what's your motive? I suppose the other thing I'd like to uh, like clarify is Detective Gumshoe's motive for committing this crime. Hmm, motive, huh? Gumshoe, you got a grudge against Faraday or anything? No, sir. Not me. Not a single bad thing against Mr. Faraday, sir. Is that a fact? Objection. You really have a problem with you really have a problem with lying, don't you, Detective Gumshoe? I'm telling you, I am not lying. I mean, he always acts unnatural, though. Uh, the more suspicious you become. If you want a motive, Edgeworth, I have one for you right here. Could you please share it with us? However. Be forewarned that I won't hesitate to object to uh, flights of fancy, because all I'm interested in is the perfect explanation. I forgot this girl likes to laugh at me. You're serious, aren't you? Fine. You amuse me, so I'll humor you with a little courtroom practice. I do really like her design with like the the scale, like the truth scale things on her for earrings. Uh, gumshoe's motive. It was about a week ago. I saw the detective get chewed out by a livid Faraday in front of the precinct. He stood there super pale as Mr. Faraday yelled, That's a salary cut. Oh my. If you wanted to kill somebody just for a salary cut, I would be dead. In the future, obviously. A brand new detective suddenly getting his salary cut. That's reason enough for a grudge. Well, how's that for the perfect explanation? You totally misunderstand me, pal. No matter how mad I get, I could never hold a grudge. Quiet. We can't trust anything you say. Sir. Hmm. There's nothing wrong with the motive she proposed, per se. But there are some gaps in her logic that need to be filled in. Misuse perfect explanation. May not be so perfect at all. About a week ago, got chewed out by Faraday, stood there super pale, brand new detective suddenly getting a salary cut, that's reason enough for a grudge. I mean, I still wouldn't call it perfect, and neither, neither would 
Edgeworth, since that's what he kind of focused on afterwards. So, that? Hold it! You call your explanation perfect? Aha! <laughs> Is it not to your liking? Unfortunately for you, it's just not up to my standards. Oh, is there something you want me to clarify in that case? Uh... Yeah, raise an objection. Alright, if you could clear one thing up... Uh... Yeah, there's no... Even if that's motive to kill Faraday, that's not motive to kill Rel. Although I guess you could argue that the mo like the motive for killing Rel is to set up is to make it like the frame. I understand Detective Gumshoe's potential motive for killing Mr. Faraday. However, what about his motive for killing Mr. Rel? His motive for killing Rel? Like I would know. Hmm. If there was no clear motive for both of the murders, then I doubt this incident would have occurred. Would you agree? Is there anyone else who might have had a grudge against either of the two men? Or should we look into that ourselves? Oh, in that case, I have absolutely no idea. What? But that's impossible. She must know something. Wait. Can you please not glare at me like that? It makes me laugh. I didn't even do anything and you're already laughing. Well, anyway. The way I see it, as long as he had a motive to kill one of the two, this crime would have played out the way it did anyway. Oh? Would you care to explain your logic? And this time, please try to provide a truly perfect explanation. Perfect this, perfect that. Stop being so uptight, or is that a, a requisite trait for being a Von Karma? Miles Edgeworth, I demand that you shut this rude woman up. I wish you'd both be quiet for just one second. Oh well, I guess I'll just have to explain it to you kids. There's no one there's no one out there with a motive to kill both Mr. Faraday and Mr. Rell. All you really have to establish is that someone had a grudge against one of the two men. Mr. Rell, who happened to be there, became a witness to Mr. Faraday's murder. Therefore, he was killed out of necessity and set up to look like they had both killed each other. I wonder if that's really true. Is there no one with a grudge to kill both? I should take a hard look at the evidence from this morning's case. Okay, so that's my clue. Yeah. Because cause she was... Or she has the same last name. Like, I, rem I remember that much from the original case of Who Died. Boo, boo, boo. Where was it? Can I, can I go there without? I can't see my evidence. Well, I'm assuming I have to present evidence anyway, so... Oh, I, I forgot. It doesn't do, like, Eureka until I actually do the thing. Uh, I want to read this. Yeah, the victim, CCU. Uh, staff member found not guilty. Yeah, because she would have the dude, the guy, I forget his name, uh, Rel. He's the one that killed the victim, but he's claiming that Faraday told him to do it. So, given if she believes that, she would have motive to kill both. One's the One's the weapon, one's the attacker, or commander. So, this. Objection! Miss you, I believe there is someone you overlooked in, your, in making your statement. Or rather, is it because you'd rather not bring this person up? What do you mean? We are looking for someone with a reason to kill both Mr. Faraday and Mr. Rell. I can think of at least one person that fits the bill. He was the suspect in the original KG-8 incident, and a member of the embassy staff, Mr. Manny Cochin. Okay, so not you. 
<laughs> well, pfft. Uh, that's right, the very man who came to visit you earlier out in the hallway. The man who killed a member of the, uh, the embassy staff, Mr. Rell. And the man who was the lead prosecutor of the KG-8 incident, Mr. Faraday. Man, I got that right completely the wrong way. Are you telling me that Mr. Cochin has no reason at all to kill both of these men? Well, I suppose he might have a reason or two. You, you cover for me, pal. Yeah, you're not such a bad guy after all. Don't get ahead of yourself. You're still a stuff to that thing. Let's mistake about that. The perfect evidence. The perfect testimony. These are the only things I wish to hold. But I didn't do it. <laughs> you will stay under my authority and go investigate Mr. Manny Coach and for me. And remember, I will not be very forgiving should any of this leak out. Hold it. You want to investigate Cochin? You just be wasting your time. And why is that? Cochin was up in the viewing gallery watching the trial, or so I was told. Every cop in this place has been keeping an eye on the guy since he arrived. Then the only real suspect we have is still Detective Gumshoe. I suppose so. No way, come on, Detective Pad, you've got to believe me, sir. I really was in the hallway the whole time, sir. I never took a single step into this room, sir. Okay, then are you saying there was someone else who passed through the hallway? I know there was no one else, sir. Then why should I believe you didn't do it? That is one incredibly foolish detective, standing right in front of a crime scene all by himself, it's as good as a confession of guilt. I have to admit it's a bit strange. Most criminals will fabricate some sort of lie to escape their crimes. And if that detective really wanted to prove that he is innocent, you'd think he would at the very least offer up I spaced out while on duty or the like. Come on, Gumshoe, time for your interrogation. Detective Bad. Miles Edgeworth, I will go on ahead and report this to Papa. And that, as they say, is that. Right, everyone? Ho ho ho. Well, I suppose we should both be getting back to our real jobs now. Before we do miss you, there is something I'd like to speak with you about. What is it? Uh... Everything is neat and tidy on top of the table, with not a single disturbance in sight. So I've set these two men up and make it look like they killed each other. If there's one thing I cannot forgive, it's the uh, desecration of the dead. A pleasant breeze is blowing through the window. If only I could exchange it with the stifling atmosphere of this crime scene. So, what did you want to ask me about? The current case of the murdered embassy staff member. I've heard that people have begun calling it the second KG-8 incident. Only among you law enforcement types. And what about it? I'd like for you to tell me everything you know about the original KG-8 incident. I'm afraid I can't help you. I don't know anything beyond what was reported in the papers. No, I believe you know much more, since you are directly tied to the KG-8 incident. I'd appreciate it if you'd stop with the false accusations. Baseless outbursts are useless both inside and outside the courtroom, don't you know? I do, but I also know that I do have a leg to stand on here. Think you can stop making that ultra-serious face in front of me? If you could please stop laughing for just one second. I'm not going to make any headway like this. I'm just going to have to show her exactly how related that she... Yeah, this is from the last name. Oh. Uh... Miss you. I believe that I have proof of your connection to the KG-8 incident. That file is your proof. Very well then. Why don't you tell me exactly how I'm related to the KG-8 incident? Through the victim. Your connection to the KG-8 incident? 
is through the victim. The victim's name is CCU. You will note that she has the same last name as you. Can you really still tell me with a straight face that you are not related to this case? Sorry, but we're not related. What? Just kidding. You asked that question with such a serious look on your face that I couldn't help but... <laughs> Miss you. I ask that you please tell me the truth. Ahem. Alright, I'll tell you everything I know. As you guessed, the one who reported the smuggling activities of the Amano group was my sister, CCU as I thought, and she was killed right before she was to testify at the impending trial by Manny Kojin. But because he was tried once and was acquitted, he gets to live out the rest of his cushy life completely carefree. So I wonder if... uh, no, because he would have pointed him out. All because of a lack of evidence? No, I heard that the evidence to convict him did exist. What? I heard it from Mr. Faraday himself after Mr. Kojin's trial was over. Apparently, a man in black made off with the most important piece of evidence that the evidence had been tampered with. Isn't it just like a criminal to do something like that? The smuggling ring being run out of the Amano group by one of its secretaries, they bailed Mr. Cochin out, turns out they were in league with each other all along. How big was that smuggling ring? Was it a large operation? I don't really know. Which is why I wanted to become the lead defense on this case that people are calling the second KG-8 incident. But I haven't learned anything new at all. I was probably expecting too much, I know. You mean you think this case has nothing to do with the smuggling ring? I don't know what to think. Why did Mr. Cochin want to meet with you earlier? Actually, he came to watch the trial. Apparently, he only found out I was the defense lawyer on this case after he arrived. He figured he should say hi and one other thing. Looks like you couldn't resolve anything this time either. Too bad. What's that supposed to mean? <laughs> oh boy, stop with the scary face already. I'm fine, really. I gave him a good slap across the face. The way she talks about slapping him as she laughs is kind of creepy. But it's just as Mr. Bat said. He's not related to the double murder. I asked around and people in the gallery claimed that he was in his seat the entire time. Talk about cruel fate. Well, this is about all I know. Sorry. Guess I wasn't much help. That's not true. I'm sorry I made you recall such a painful time in your life. Oh god. Edgeworth, you really are too serious for your own good. You really need to learn to relax. We wouldn't want you to die of stress, would we? Thank you for the advice, but there's no need to worry. I work in my own way, and I will catch this criminal in my own way as well, you see. Look at with your game face on, ready to go. <laughs> I'm making no such face. Did you know, laughter is the best medicine, Edgeworth. Don't you get tired of making such a serious face all the time? I'm charged with making sure that all the criminals of this world are found guilty. I have no need for laughter. There you go, making that face again. Oh well, I've got to get going. I still have a few loose ends I need to tie up. KG-8 incident in this murder investigation, it is my belief that these two cases are related to each other somehow. Plus, the detective, Detective Gumshoe, it's obvious he's lying even though the lie is hurting his chances. Clearly this case is far from over, but whether or not that detective is the murderer can only be determined once I've completed my perfect investigation. Mr. Von Karma, I swear to uphold your honorable name, or my name isn't Miles Edgeworth. To be continued. Dun 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 dun. Save your progress. On that one, yes. Please. Save complete. That's where we're gonna stop for now. Bye bye.